talk about. I want to kick off the game. Uh, so I like to kick off the game with with uh, a, a something called a mechanic of the day, which is basically where I, I, I go over like a, a small little piece of combat or uh, interaction or something. It's meant to be just like a refresher, uh, something to help keep us all aligned, something to get us all on the same page about what a specific mechanic means. If there's a homebrew element to this, I usually mention it. Uh, and so today I wanted to talk about um, I wanted to talk about like things you can do during combat. Um, things that count as actions. This came up as a question during a previous game that I was playing. So besides the usual things like attack or um, you uh, attacking or disengaging or um, or dashing, there are there are like almost ten other things you can do as an action during your turn. For example, you can shove them. Um, you can uh, you can uh, you can dodge. So if you want, you can do a dodge action. Uh, you can grapple, you can shove, as I said. Um, you can also give the help action during combat if you want. Um, you can also, and this is one that I think a lot of people forget about, is readying an action. This is probably my, my, like, my biggest tip is if you find at the time where you're, where you're up for combat, Either you can't see the enemy, or there's something going on, or for some reason you can't take the action you want to take, you can't attack or hide or do whatever. You can also ready an action, which basically says, if insert circumstance happens, my character will respond as such. It is not using a reaction, that's a totally different part of the turn mechanic. It is just basically saying like, okay, I'm not going to do anything in this moment in time, however, if that bad guy steps steps away from that wall, or if that that thing, whatever it is, usually you always have to have a, a trigger. Like if this, then that. If this thing happens, my character will do that, and then at that moment, you can take your turn. So it's a, it's a really good little thing to have in your back pocket, so that when if if we're in combat at any point ever in time, and it gets to your turn, you're like shit. I I'm kind of stuck. Like I don't really know what to do. I don't really have something I can do right now. You can always say, I'm going to ready an action, and I'm going to fire off a gun if that guy takes one further step toward that other person. Um, and then if that person steps, you can... <laughs> and, you know, um, the one caveat being, you might need to remind me that you readied an action, or, or just, you know, something like that, but that's always an op option available to you. Um, so yeah, so that's the mechanic of the day. Ready. Ready, ready, ready. Uh, ready. Ready, Freddy. Um... And now we're gonna get into into this. I'll go back to my notes here. Um, we started the last session in in Skoda, the city of nine roads. We were first introduced to Dr. Ford, who was in a park. She received a missive, and the missive included instructions on a, a location and a time. Um, we then cut over to uh, Dr. Jones, who was with Shorty. Is Shorty, right? Yeah, Shorty Rotundo. Shorty Rotundo. Yeah, but if it's like Dr. Jones and Dr. Ford and then first name. So is Shorty okay? Shorty. Okay. Yeah. So, uh, we, you know, Dr. Ford is with Shorty on their way to the office. They're met with that um, just outside the office. They meet Dr. Jones's kind of understudy. Is that it? What's the, Please. what's the correct term? Is it like undergrad, understudy? He's a student he's assistant. Teacher's assistant. Teacher's, teacher's assistant. assistant. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. Uh, teacher's assistant, uh, Prentergast. Um, and the three of you kind of walk into a room that is not empty. There is an old associate of yours who gives you a missive and tells you you must depart immediately. Informs you that a Lord Wilmore has been has completely and totally funded this project to go to this lost shrine and uh, investigate and see what's going on ahead of time. You all arrive at the location. You're met by a dwarf and a human. They inform you that they weren't able to do too much reconnaissance. Uh, they were re really heavily relying on one of their one of their fellows uh, by the name of Phelan, who went into the dungeon and never came back. Uh, Doctor Ford cleverly like wrote the names of the main deities in primordial, and they managed one of them managed to identify that it seems like there it seems like whatever for whatever else the the shrine has something to do with namtar namtar which is the deity of the afterlife and judgment you start making your way towards the shrine with a little like makeshift mask by 
Dr. Ford in tow. Um, as you're told that this is this shrine has some sort of toxic air. The, the air is not entirely safe to, to breathe. Um, as you get close, you start to get this, this feeling of being watched. And then you start to hear the sounds. It sounds like something's chasing after you. You all start to move faster, trying to get away. You can't see what's chasing you, but you all start kind of moving with haste. When suddenly you 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 kind of all walk across, uh, enter a space where the ground is soft. You fall several layers down into essentially the belly of this shrine, and you begin looking around. In the first room, you see uh, that this the room has these little alcoves, and each alcove has these shelves with these little six-inch figures. And uh, and then uh, Doctor Ford finds a door. And in the door finds a, 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 a very a very subtle keyhole. She brings in Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones inspects the figures more closely and finds that one of them has something that looks suspiciously like a key. Upon picking it up, sees that the, that the little key-like piece is loose, inserts it into the door, opens the door, which hasn't been opened in a long time. Um, in this room, you are also hit with your first dose of uh, poison gas from the noxious air in the space. You proceed down the hallway. Uh, everything looks fine, if not old and decrepit, before Dr. Ford steps on a pressure plate and uh, several logs fall from the ceiling, creaming you up against the door at the other end of the hallway. You all open it. You walk into another room where there is a boulder in the middle. There's mud on the floor. Um, uh, and you are suddenly face to face with a giant crab-like creature who tells you that they are and they are not the guardian of this space. Dr. Ford convinces the, this, this creature that you guys mean no harm. You are here only to look around, basically, you're sightseeing. And the creature believes you, uh, thanks to a high, high um, persuasion role on Dr. Ford's part. And uh, and that's that's a very very quick recap. Um, a few other things to call out is you were also joined by Octavia. Octavia. She is a, uh, a, a, a war veteran turned journalist, uh, a, a, a tabaxi young woman, youngish woman with a. Uh, slender athletic body and one arm is amputated and she is she is the only condition set forth by Lord Wilmore in order to fund this expedition. She is representing the layman. She doesn't know anything about shrines, any she doesn't know anything about puzzles, but she's here to document your story and take it back home and then publish articles and share the world, share with the world what amazing work you guys are all doing to preserve arcana and magical items so that they're not destroyed by those who seek to destroy them. One other detail is that you're also informed that there is an entity who is hot on the trail to get into this shrine as well. They are close to finding out its lo exact location. And um, a gentleman by the name of Gaston Chevalier is is interested, highly interested, <laughs> is highly interested in this location. Um, as he is interested in every single fucking location that can be found with magical items because he firmly believes, as he has been quoted saying, that magical items are basically blasphemous and they shouldn't exist. And the magic is the reason why the gods are fighting and upset. So he is quite possibly en route. And it is a little bit of a, a it is a, 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 um, a, an expedition where time is not on your side, both because the air is toxic and the longer you spend in the air, the more damage it will deal to your frail bodies. And also because there are bad guys looking to come and just completely destroy this place. At the end of the session, you all decided that you wanted to head up north and see what's there. Is this still the action you want to take? Yeah. Okay. Yes. One thing that I wanted to go back and get into a little bit. It is at the time that this particular thing happened, um, I was in the throes of trying to figure out a, a technical issue that I was having on my end so that I could give you in person people a map. However, when you first arrived, when you first fell into that first room, you realized quickly that there wasn't sufficient light and not everyone was able to see in the dark. And so, Dr. Ford, you go to turn on your, your, um, uh, Dr. Jones, you go to turn on your torch 
and uh, Dr. Ford comes over and turns it on for you using a little bit of, of magic. I wanted to just explore that for just a moment before we proceed into this hallway, because uh, I wanted to know in that moment what what Dr. Jones would have said or thought or felt or reacted to seeing magic cast in this way. Oh, oh of course, with, with the coloring of the conversations you had on that very long flight from uh, from the city of Nine Roads to the location, this remote forest location. Basically understanding where Dr. Ford is coming from, Jones wasn't surprised to see Ford use magic. And also considering the company, he wasn't completely surprised, though he may have been slightly wary to see what the reaction of our reporter was. Mm. Ah, okay. The reporter didn't notice because she was sketching some of the little stills, some of the little still life scenes and the little statues and stuff. Uh, and you guys didn't ask, but I figured I would I would paint a little picture. So although she is an amputee, she has essentially like a, a gadget a gadget kind of thing strapped to the arm, and it that it's that that holds the notebook so she can sketch into it. So she can't use two hands. Mm. Like a gadget prosthetic. Like a gadget prosthetic, essentially. And you can see that there were a few other contraptions on there that look like it's it's like she can kind of attach other things to it. Uh, but for the time, as she's going with you, she's got a notebook there. She's avidly sketching everything that she sees. Um, Very cool. yeah. yeah. I love Octavia. She's wonderful. Um, okay. So you guys, uh, you guys are standing now at the door and let me know what you want to do. Oh, I, I will now lead the party this time around. Yes. Because Octavia is, uh, because, um, Dr. Ford is not good at spotting traps, it seems. Yes, please. Uh, also, I I realize I do this a lot, and I was reminded how much I do it when I was editing the last video, but I'm constantly, like, thinking I'm saying one thing when I'm actually saying another. So, like, I could be looking at Dr. Jones and think I'm saying Dr. Jones, but I'm actually saying Dr. Ford or something. So, please, just just correct me if I'm, if I'm just blathering on about things that don't make sense. It's too many doctors in the kitchen. Many, many many doctors. Doctors. Doctor? Doctor? Um, doctor? Doctor? Yes. Doctor? Please don't. I I will I will stand back this time. I may not be the best to lead us. Wonderful. I, I love uh, figuring out how they protect these temples. You know, there was that one time, ah, uh, almost didn't make it. Ah. Now, uh, <laughs> Jordy just laughs. <laughs> didn't make it but i'll ask later i will open the gate okay and huh? step forward okay shall i roll for survival in one of the uh, fun things you don't need to roll for survival just now however um as the door opens um it does require not enough of a strength not enough strength that would require um a strength check but again this temple has been laying still for huh? A long time who knows how many years the walls have shifted under the weight of the of the ground above things are stuck together due to you know weather changing as you as you uh turn the door and push in it requires a few nudges each nudge pushes it a little further in finally you manage to get it pushed open um and the, when the door opens fully you all experience a kind of uh almost like as if the hallway is exhaling onto you a smell of acrid slightly slightly acidic air all hits hits your noses um tingles your skin uh the the hallway is dark except for the light cast by this beautiful little light spell um which by the way is not a concentration spell is it I don't believe so no it lasts an hour it is not concentration okay um and one other thing that I wanted to do, let me just double check real quick. Uh, but basically as you walk, so as you start to make your way down the hallway, any walls or surfaces that are that are touched by the light um, have a slight greenish tinge to them. They're damp and you can see it looks, it looks like the walls almost are sweating. And that sweat seems to have, um, turned the poisonous air in the space almost into um, 
like a, it, it almost looks like mucus in texture as you walk down the hallway, you see this. Um, in addition to these kind of wet, slimy, slightly greenish tinge walls, you also see a healthy, uh, uh, you see it looks like, although it is old, it is not, it is not void of life. You hear the chittering of bugs reacting to the light as you walk down the hallway. You can see evidence of spider webs here and there. And there's also, um, it looks like at one point the walls were covered in stucco, uh, but the, the stucco has become saturated with water decomposing in various areas. And you can, al almost as if you were to go and touch it, you could just like wipe it off with your end. Um, there are areas where the stucco has fallen a bit, exposing the seams of the walls behind it, which are large stones. Um, yes, wet, slimy walls. The Doctor Ford will just say, as we're kind Wait. of shuffling in, the walls they're are pretty. Wet. They're pretty close up behind Doctor Jones, but trying not to take the lead because they don't. They're not confident in their trap spotting abilities right now. But she'll but just say, so. "I'm amazed. There's an entire ecosystem down here, surviving mm -hmm. all this time." Oh. So she's just would like you fascinated be, by the Would you really be surprised by she's, roses? She's yeah, a nature roses. nerd. I don't know. I feel like bugs live everywhere. I'd be surprised if there weren't bugs. I'd be worried if there were no bugs. Uh, she wants to drag a finger against the wall and like to like touch this this slime and just see like is it caustic? Is it? She's just curious about it. As you drag your finger you immediately feel it burn your flesh as you take one point of acid damage from touching this real quick slime. Like, yeah, yeah clean it off on our real on our clothing armor leather armor but go. Oh, yep that that is exactly what i thought you, was going to happen as you wipe it off on the leather armor you can see if you're like if your leather armor is polished at all you can see just a hint of that polish get tarnished as a result of wiping off this acidic slime on your armor. Yes, let's not spend too much time down here. As you're kind of looking over, looking at your, the leather area and your skin and your hand, uh, you suddenly feel uh, something over your shoulder and you look and see Octavia looking and sniffing at your hand. Bright eyes looking at your finger going, interesting. Does it hurt? It's not uh, very much. Although I wouldn't recommend testing it yourself. At, at hearing that, Dr. Jones turns around, this would hurt. Uh, don't touch the walls. He kind of leans in, gives it a quick... <gasps> They're effectively a physical representation of the poison air we're breathing. So, um, a stay in the middle. Behind everyone, Shorty is putting his finger in the poison. <laughs> he's touching the poison. Over and over again? He, he's, he's just. I mean, you also take one point of acid damage as you interact with it. Is it acid damage or is it poison damage? Oh, good point. Um, uh, acid damage. Acid. Yes. All right, yeah. I will take the one point of acid damage. <laughs> one point of acid damage. To all the nosy fingers touching the wall. Um, yeah. So you you're now in this hallway. As you look down, you see before you the hallway doesn't go terribly far. The light cast by by dr jones dr jones is like fake torch i guess because like you cast yeah. light on the torch so it's torch casting light right yeah mm -hmm. so you can see the light casting cast by this um by this spell does illuminate the end of the tunnel and you can't tell from the from from where you are at the very beginning whether or not the tunnel turns or not i will continue slowly approaching we'll stop right at the uh edge at the edge of to where i yeah. can start to see like Got there's it. a wall uh just one second i want to double check one thing actually i wish i had my tablet so the tablet would be good for this um cheers is, is it charged probably not that was a close one you almost knocked that off cheers cheers to those of you online cheers cheers mm. and this ladies and gentlemen that's where the game truly begins. <laughs> um, yeah, so Dr. Jones and Dr. 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 Ford, as you walk by, 
uh, you each perceive, each of you, both of you having the highest passive perception of the group, you each perceive uh, halfway down the hallway toward the end, there is um, a slight carving a little bit further up on the wall um, above what would be like essentially a door frame. You do see like a, a little symbol, something etched in there. But as you continue down the hallway toward the end, you see the hallway um, turns and terminates at a collapsed stairwell. Are you looking? Wait, you're just at the edge. You haven't. Yeah, I'm, okay. like, I'm about to Yeah. do one of those like. Yeah, it's. Uh, <laughs> Is right behind. You see, you do see as you peek over, you see that there is a collapsed staircase. There is also, um, as you walk down the hallway, you hear these little chittering noises intensifying, and you peek around, and you do see there is uh, some some bats kind of stuck up in a corner, and they're starting to get agitated with the light that's introduced by your spell. Bat. So the. Uh... That's all. The, the collapse. Thank you. The collapse stairway. Does it look like Doctor Jones turned into a bat? Uh, no. Uh, Gulliver just yells "bat" and points. Oh, okay, Gulliver yells. Um, very good. Does it's it look random. like impassable? Yeah, it looks collapsed in, uh, similar to the to the collapse that 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 brought you guys to this place. Occasionally, you can see like dirt shifting and falling. Okay. So that Jones is just like, my apologies, did not mean to disturb your sleep. And he starts flapping. backing you away hear, like, slowly. You hear the, the sound of thin skin flapping, hitting each other, like like the sound that birds make when they take flight, but um, mm -hmm. as a bat kind of like heads in your general direction and then goes back. And you can get a sense that it might be telling you, like, GTFO, get away from here. Mm -hmm. It so looks, like mean... oh. looks like we'll have to pick a different door. Great. You don't mean thin-skinned in terms of emotionally, do you? No, no. These bats are okay. these bats are thugs, but they don't like uh, you know they're, they're trying to get chase you away. But they do have thin-skinned wings. I see. Uh, it's physical. It's not not emotional. Where, where was the where was the symbol you said was halfway up the corridor? You mean like halfway? Yeah, like right there. Mm hmm. I uh, inspect it a little bit as we walk back. Or the... You can make a history, or... The shrimp room. <laughs> yes. uh, yeah, you can make a, a history, or pers uh, I guess history. Mm -mm -mm. First roll of the night. Hey! That's a 17. On a 17, as you look over this glyph, um, it, doesn't, it doesn't exactly resemble... Um, the glyphs or symbols or languages that you know of, likely because this is a totally different country with totally unique individuals and a different kind of history here, but it closely resembles the symbols that you've seen around uh, areas that are are um, uh, burial sites, tombs, uh, things of that nature. Uh, with that, with with the um, yeah. Uh, as you look, you see, uh, upon closer inspection, um, it does look like, although it looks like a wall, it is the wet, the width and breadth of a door. And I so, investigate that wall yeah. a little for any kind of, uh, especially touching, hands on. Yeah, touching, feeling you for have like. Gloves on or any, I, I mean, earlier I was kind of assumed you don't have gloves on, but do you have gloves on or would you put gloves on or anything? No. Nah, she'd be bare hands. Um, she gets her hands in the dirt and wear gloves. Uh, yeah, she's feeling around for like a like a button or just something something that moves maybe. But she's yeah. definitely using her hands. Please roll. It's gonna please. it's gonna hurt, but she's yeah. you know yeah. it's worth it. <laughs> um, that. that is a twenty, dirty twenty. Uh, yeah. So, as you look around, taking an additional we'll say two points of acid damage as you're like physically touching and moving through this slimy thing. You kind of just like with your hand, just like cupping and, and sloshing away stucco, almost as if one would remove a bunch of snow off a windshield. You see it just like just wiping straight away. And what is what you see after a few moments interacting with, with this is that it isn't precisely a door, but you do see that the stone in front of you 
doesn't quite go to the ceiling. And based on the light cast from Dr. Jones's porch, there does seem to be a cavity that goes back behind the stone so that it's possible, you theorize, the stone has some way to move back. Mm. Um, as Dr. Ford is clearing all this, Dr. Jones just comes behind her. Cassidy. It's just kind of watching. Yes, this may be a passage. Um, we should figure out how to get through. Uh, let's see if they've got something that can help with this. It is roughly seven or eight feet wide. Yeah. Actually, let me double check that. There might actually be a size. Um, meow, 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 meow. And what's blocking our way? A large a large stone or block. Okay. Gulliver is going to give a deep sigh, roll up his shirt sleeves, and say, ah, anybody want to help me with this? And is going to try to uh, sort of just heave just, yeah. the rock. Please oh. roll a stealth check for me. Stealth. I'm sorry, strength. See, <laughs> As you do that, uh, Arabella is going to gonna, gonna <laughs> touch your shoulder. Dr. Ford's going to touch your shoulder and say, please do lift with your legs. And as she says that, she's going to cast guidance on you. Oh, yeah. Is anyone else uh, throwing a shoulder in to help her into guest? And if so, please roll me a strength check. Not stealth. The, the, the rock doesn't care about how sneaky sneaky you are. Guidance Arabella is an additional 1d4, is that correct? Yeah. Correct. And Arabella is not going to help because she ain't that strong. Okay. <laughs> but she will provide assistance in this way. Uh, Dr. Jones just mostly watches. Yeah. Curious to see if the rock will move at all. Okay. Just Because okay. is he pushing, pulling? Cause... Pushing, right? I think you're pushing. Pushing, yeah. Yeah. Um, uh, Pushing. Shorty, are you gonna try to help with this? Shorty, shorty. So no. So it's just Prendergast. It's literally just. It sounds it, like it. No one else is throwing a shoulder. I'm an old man. Okay. That's so kind of it's. Good. I got a. I mean, I got an eight. <laughs> with with guidance. You, you roll your D four. Oh, with uh -huh. guidance. Yeah. <laughs> mm. I rolled a four. Uh, well, actually, so you're getting guidance, but it sounds like you're also getting help from others. Friendly reminder, you can use the help action to give him advantage on his role. Um, just say encouraging things. Could Go ahead be a and... good... I mean, it sounds like they're saying it's not in any of their Freddy, characters. Freddy can look like he's trying to help. Are you gonna? Yeah. Well, then roll strength, good. fucker. <laughs> roll strength? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Aren't you, aren't you, like, stout? Do you have strength in the bag? <laughs> That's wrong, dude, man. He's stout. He's not a... He's, he's, a, a he's not. He's not. He, he's not an unstoppable force. He's an immovable object. I mean, object. a dwarf sorcerer would still have high constitution. <laughs> you know? Okay, whatever. Constitution uh, and strength. Tell me what you're fucking doing. All right, storm yeah. check. Did you roll advantage? Did you roll again, Michael? Uh, I'll roll again. For hold on. Seventeen. Uh, Seventeen. Okay. Okay, this one is better. It's fifteen. Uh, I don't know if I still have guidance on that or if it's one per roll. Guidance. Was this the first one. guidance you rolled? Was a one. I mean, I can give it to you again. It is a cantrip. So I'll oh, okay, it. then they'll do it again. Do it a second time. Does it last, what, like a minute? It lasts yeah. a minute, but it's on one check. Mm -hmm. But I could still guide the next thing. There's really yeah, no reason I don't need to. I couldn't. So. Where is the... Okay, yeah. so that's a 17 total for me. 17 plus, what did you roll? Uh, so I, roll, I rolled a 12 plus 3 plus 2. Yeah. We both rolled 17. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah, we both rolled so, 17. 17. You both... I, I won't say roll up your sleeves. You do the opposite. You put your sleeve down to try to protect yourself against this slime that you mm -hmm. now all know is... is, is, is um, spicy. It's a little <laughs> spicy. Mm -hmm. uh, Gulliver would put on gloves. <clears throat> yeah. You... You get your feet in. One, two, three. You both push. At the force of both of you pushing, um, Prendergast kind of almost like pushing from above and then Shorty pushing from below, both of you actually managed to nudge the stone 
forward just a little bit, just maybe like an inch or so, uh, confirming that the stone does have, does does move back. However, with just the two of you, it's uh, it it uh, would require a few more turns of effort. And those of you wearing linen, um, you notice at the by the time you're done, kind of like pushing and you see that it moves back, you stop to look at how much you've managed to move it. You also look and see that the acid has already started eating through the linen. Exactly. <laughs> Do we have any way of dealing with this freaking acid? Uh, there must be a simpler way. Um, hold on. Uh, she's gonna hop down the corridor back toward our shrimp friend. Yes. Um, pardon me? May I ask yes. you one more question? If you miss. There is a passage in this hall. Do you know what opens it? I know you haven't left this room very much, but it's worth a shot. There's a passage? <laughs> no! What's in it? There we are not sure. But perhaps, well, wait, I know, you must tell me. Have you seen others control doors, for instance, to get in and out of this room in any oh, special no. way? No, nothing is that simple here. Nothing is that simple here. That that may be helpful. Thank you. And she'll run back. I have learned nothing new other than <laughs> this door probably opens in a non-traditional way. I don't think pushing will quite do it. But well, you asked move, for, for clarity. Move. You asked if there's a lever. <laughs> she, said, she said, "Ain't no levers in town." Uh. <laughs> Oliver's gonna try to. Oliver's brawn has failed. He'll try to use his brains and just kind of mm -hmm. give the whole rock a thorough <laughs> once over, at a at sort of a distance of like ten inches. You can roll a perception check for me. Or investigation if you're like touching and prodding and moving and trying to clear away some more of the stucco yucky stuff. Yeah, I mean I'm touching where it's safe to touch, so yeah. Nothing but... is safe to touch. Okay, so um the stucco also is poisonous, is what you're saying. The stucco is saturated with the same moisture that is poisonous. Are, are my gloves gone or are they still there no, enough they, that they'll, I can they'll last, they'll last another turn or two. Okay, cool. Uh, I will like not plunging myself in so as to hurt myself, but like kind of use the gloves to finagle it. 16 investigation. On a 16, as you're looking close, kind of trying to move away more of the slime to get a better look. Uh, again, with the help of Jones, who's like right there next to you looking, uh, you have like almost like a flashlight next to you. You see evidence that this rock has been moved before. You see um, scars on the sides of the wall that don't look like, they, they look older, they look like they've been, um, uh, like the scars have been eaten themselves away by this, by the kind of acidic slime in this place. Certainly not new or fresh as the ones that you might have just made by your, your gesture to push it back. So it does look like the stone has been moved before in a very similar way. Like, like pushed? Yeah. Mm -hmm. But pushed hard enough to like indent the rock? No, pushed, like, pushed back. Like, you see, basically, like, scar ruts on the wall on see. either okay. side of the rock. And it only moved, like, inches, right? Is there, yeah. and there's, yeah, okay. All right, well, <clears throat> it looks like this was knocked back before, so maybe we're just sort of not very good at this, but, what, you know, what, what I don't did know where that takes us. Say? Our what friend? Our crab, crustacean, whatever. Oh, a crab I, friend. Uh, yes, I is. have a feeling uh, they were born, live, and will die in that room. So I don't think asking them about anything outside that room will get us anywhere. Um, but this but... Jones scratches his head. He's like, let's go ask him one more question. All right. Give it a shot. Go back and walk back. Well, because... Dr. Ford is Only talking I can. to it. speak with animals, yeah. In, in, in crab mm -hmm. speak, in, yes. Back again? What's in the tunnel? Uh, one more question, uh, Dr. Jones. Can you ask it, has it ever seen someone standing in this room at any particular wall and then heard a loud noise coming from that direction? There 
to ask that question. No. Instead of... No. No. Uh, Has there it was... ever heard noise coming from that direction? I think, as I recall, the memory of this creature will only be a single day. So unless it's happened quite recently, it, it just won't remember. Uh, this, I mean, that might be that might be the case for normal creatures who live normal lives. But considering how old the shrine is, it is fair to it is it, it isn't beyond the realm of possibility that this creature could possibly remember more than just a day. Considering they lived far more than just a single lifespan, um, there is a there is uh, there is not the typical kind of airiness that you might have when you talk to normal animals this creature is not proficient with language enough to seem smart but has intelligence yeah yeah, yeah. i guess i guess i can pick up on that yeah so i'll ask sorry what was what was sort of the follow-up uh has it ever heard noise coming from this direction the direction of the door have you ever heard noise coming from this direction oh yes certainly what kind of noise? It searches for ways to explain noises. In a... In a... Loud. Scratching or a pounding yeah, or a... Scratching. Pound, scratching. What is scratching? Uh, like, is it like, like this? Scratch, scratch. She's yes, trying yes, to scratch. Yes, 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 yes. I heard it many long time ago. Before I fell asleep. Long time ago. Oh. Okay. Uh, yes, I have heard noises, scratching noises. Wonderful. Can you ask it if it remembers what happened on the day or time it heard the noises? Uh, and what happened on the days when you heard those noises? What What else happened? I don't know. It was a long time ago. It's not remember. It's really remember. trying, like it's like almost nervous. It's like yeah. uh you see it's like eyes jittering. You're doing great. Um this is all very helpful. Click 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 click. Affirmation. It's happy to be it's happy to do good. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice to make a friend, but I uh friend? Yes, friend, absolutely. Do we all just want to give it the old team try? Perhaps we just need more force. I mean, I'm no barbarian, but I can push. No, that's what I'm talking about. At this point, uh, see Dr. Jones does one of those, like, <clears throat> that old man guy, that thing, like, click, 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 going to go back to the wall and to protect her hands. She does have a shield. Uh, that she'll pull out of her backpack. It's sort of a smaller, like, buckler-style shield, but she does use it sometimes. Uh, and um, and she'll put that against the wall, push against it so that she's not pushing on the wall with her bare hands. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So is that everyone else doing that? Like, pushing where yep. Dr. Ford has got the shield? Feel free to yes. use that. Yeah, How big as a shield. <clears throat> I mean, depending if that's, yeah, if that's feasible. Yeah. Yeah, how it big covers is it? half half my body. I'm imagining. Okay. So like, we probably get three people at most pushing oh, on the shield. Pretty short. You think we do all four? I guess the shorties on the bottom, and then. Can I have yeah. a group strength check, please? Um, so shorty, check. shorty uh, uh, looks at oh Doctor Jones. Oh my god! Seven. He sees him stretching. He's like, "You got this, Doctor Jones." And then he casts. Well, I was gonna say <laughs> for 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 the two of you who rolled already, you don't need to roll again because I have your. We'll just carry that same strength check. But for the two of you who are joining now. Before you do that. Uh, and inadvertently cast guidance. Hell yeah! yeah. Love it. Oh. Yeah, I'll, I'll give myself guidance. Um, yeah, definitely need that guidance. Uh, you say you, you need a roll because I didn't. So seventeen's four, and then you cast guidance on. Jeez, wait, that's not a d four, is it? Yeah, it's d four. It's a it's it's a d four. Okay, kind. what'd you get? Oh, so, you you total? Total? so first I rolled a three mm -hmm. plus my two, yeah. so that's five. Yeah, and then on d four I rolled a one. 
Oh my god. So six. Oh, oh, oh wow. Okay, so like, and like then, you literally hear my, my my bag like. And um, uh, Doctor Ford, I believe you have to roll a strength as well. I also rolled a six with guidance. Oh wait, a seven with guidance. <laughs> so, so you're but the one you're all together. What you're saying is that Gulliver and Shorty are the ones putting the most force into this one. Uh, yeah, and uh, and your girl, your girl Octavia tries, but she rolls a three, so she's like, she also has one arm. What is it? Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, she was gonna try to help because she wants to help, but she rolled a three. She slips yeah. and falls. Um, <laughs> She's just like trying to push, but then you know she there's no room for her on the shield, and so she starts pushing. And her hand gets damaged, and she she like withdraws. She's like, ah, oh, no, fuck that. Um, okay, here's where I would do this. Uh, <laughs> just tell us how far it gets. That's all we need to I do, know. I, I do have another idea. If this doesn't work, you all do succeed in pushing it back another couple of inches, but it's not enough to push it all the way. I have a question. Yes. When we push it and we and push we it let it go. Good. <laughs> <laughs> go ahead. Uh, when we push it, yeah. uh, different. Uh, and let's say when we let it go, yeah. does it come back or mm -hmm. it stays? It stays. It stays. Yeah. Okay. So Octavia takes one point of acid damage. The rest of you do not take any damage because you're using the shield. However, the shield is taking damage. So uh, just so you know, you can give it. A solid like two points of acid damage for being like pressed into this acid for a while while oh. everyone is just heaving and hawing. All right, what was your second idea, Doctor Ford? Unless you guys want to just give it one last heave ho. I don't know if it's actually an idea. I think that might be the best. I was gonna try to use plant growth, but I don't <laughs> think that. White. I don't think I can use it in that way to push something. It's not. There are other growth yeah, of plant spells. It's a uh, spell that channels vitality in plants, a specific what? area. There are two possible uses um, immediate or long term benefits. Uh, it's an action. Choose a point. Normal plants in a 100 foot radius become thick and overgrown a creature moving through the area must spend four feet of movement for every one foot it moves okay. um, i would say by default since it says plants in the area at the as the beginning there's no they're really there. really i love the idea spot. but uh there's no there, there are no resources for you to use for that right now so yeah. shorty stops takes out his backpack puts his backpack on the ground oh boy uh and he somehow out of this regular sized backpack pulls out a comically large uh, um, uh, uh, crowbar. Okay. Yeah, which oh, will win his back. Okay, so, <laughs> okay. Um, and he is going to hand it to Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones, try again with this. <laughs> Dr. Jones looks at the crowbar. Did you find this ridiculous? And he goes into his bag and takes out a small, normal-looking crowbar. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. We may have mixed up our crowbars. <laughs> you like a large spell on my ice. <laughs> um, by the way, uh, just so you know, it grants you advantage to strength checks when, okay. it, when the nice. leverage can be applied. Okay. So if you feel like. Okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's used to leverage. Yeah. Should have read the crowbar. <laughs> just explain, explain how you would use the crowbar in this situation. At that point, Dr. Jones is like, you know. See, Shorty's gonna go places. I keep telling everyone. Okay. One crowbar on that side of the wall, one crowbar on this side of the wall. Two of us on each end. We give it our all. Fuck yeah. Go for it. Do it. So, Do it. Uh, yeah. I, considering I, the circumstances have changed, I want a fresh, I would like a fresh. Fresh rolls. Right? A fresh strength roll. Like uh, you want. guys are rolling with advantage right now. Yeah, you have advantage. Crowbar, yeah. And Jeez. Then, Guidance on uh, on you guys, and okay. you want to try to convince Octavia to try to help you. <laughs> no, we're good. <laughs> we don't want her hurt. Yeah, Person. fucking seventeen. Uh, Hell yeah. Eighteen. Hell yeah. Uh, fifteen. Okay. Heard Nine. Guys? I think that's enough. You guys are good. Uh, with both with with 
both of you uh, explain how you're using the scrollbars. I would like to know what do you how are you using the scrollbars? So the way I imagined it is crowbar to the side of the wall. So there'll be two people. F Maybe I can try to make it make sense. Kind of like crowbar, crowbar, person, 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 person. I don't know if they'll be able to see it, but. Let me just show, yeah. Just show the webcam right there. So, so a little closer. Here it is. Yeah. Yeah, closer. So wall, so each crowbar is like this. We'd be standing on the inside, pulling to get it to nudge inward. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. We need to pull at first to get it to move. Right. And then maybe, uh, like, once it's started, we kind of push, we kind of keep the momentum going. Yeah, you just push, and then feeling it give way, you you all kind of have a little moment, almost like a like a little bit of like a second wind. You feel the inspiration, like guys, it's, it's moving, it's moving, go go go! Uh, so you all push as hard as you can. You manage to push this thing all the way in. And am I correct in assuming, uh, Doctor Ford, that you are still you and Prendergast are still using your shield? Uh, yeah, she was sort of. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so your your the shield and the pro cross. Crowbars, Crowbars each take like two points of acid damage. So you can see the tarnish. You can see a little bit of the the tip of it is losing a dull. I don't know how you're gonna dock like perfection off of your tools, but they're imperfect now. Um, you manage to push the stone far enough in that you open up a space where you can each both get into the cavity on the other side. You nice. manage to all get in. Do you Let's see? Wait, nope, no light. Well, because you are the light, so you have to go inside. Uh, you, you got a gun. I have dark vision, so I could I could go in and see some things before you're, I. I mean, oh, I see the shorty. Come? Yeah, so shorty, shorty goes inside. Thanks. Ooh. Yeah, Octavia kind of jumps in and just kind of stands in here. <laughs> um, and then um, Michael, you sh you have access over your token if you want to use your token to move around, or I can move your token for you. Um, oh, yes. Beyond beyond the stone, you all step into a small foyer holding uh, three sealed urns on each side. Um, to the south are double doors of bronze with glyphs worked into their face. Um, so I hate to say Earth. this, but are we still being hurt by this mist? Oh, yeah. Why would you I do was that? about to roll. Why would you do that? I was about yeah. to... You're like the kid in school who says, but what about the homework, Mrs. Whatever? <laughs> I'm sorry. I felt honor-bound. He Thank is you. the grad student. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. This is we didn't take a while with that. In character. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Between, with all the time that it took for you guys to try multiple times, the heavy breathing in, uh, involved with pushing and heaving and sweating and all of this, you each take six points of poison damage. I do not. You don't. <laughs> Thank right. you, my dear friend, for <laughs> bringing it up. Um, I will immediately walk over to the door and examine the uh, glyphs. Examine the glyphs. Um, one moment, let me get back to my place. Written in Olamon, it is difficult to make out at first, but as you stand there looking at it, you see what you see eventually that it says, Here lies Dolokes Popolakas, master of the others, who is like the wind and the night. We will relay that message and let them know we've found a burial site. So please. Mm. And he says this in like a very quiet but serious tone. Please be careful. What you touch. Oh, is that permission to touch? That's one way to look at it. Uh huh. So you're you're standing in the space, you've got the urns on either side, you've got a door ahead of you. Um what are you touching? I was you just thinking about touching. Oh, okay. What do you guys want to do? Is there mucus on these walls too, or was it protected? In this no, room? basically that stone kept this area it's safe. So it's not it's not um this particular little vestibule that you're in is was almost like a capsule. Uh like an airtight capsule. There's no moisture, there's 
no air. For a briefest moment, you have a respite from the poison as the poison is slowly starting to fill in this little vestibule. Yeah. I'm sorry, could you... Much. Would you read the what, the um, the description once more of the glyphs? Uh, sure. Uh, th so, in general, uh, small foyer holding three sealed urns on each side. To the south are double doors of bronze with glyphs which read, Here lies the locus popolocas, master of the others, who is the wind and the night. T-L-O-Q-U-E-S-P-O-P-O-L-O-T-A-S. Master of the others? Who is the wind and the night. The wind and the night. Mm-hmm. Do you spell oh, the name again, please? Sorry. T L O Q U E S hyphen P O P O L O C A S. Okay. Does that passage mean anything to me, uh, like religion wise? Like, have I, have I heard that before? Have I read that before? No. Okay. Oliver. Is sort of going to train his eyeglasses on it. I'm going to try to use my knowledge of history to see if it rings a bell. You want to roll history check? You can. I mean, you 20, can. Like, 27. 27. History. Just out of curiosity, I had asked this of Dr. Jones earlier, but um, you, like, uh, yeah. Prendergast, you, uh, you are specializing in deities in general. Is there a deity that you are uh, hyper focused on? Well, so he was focused on magic in like in general or mm -hmm. magical history. I don't know if that was like focused on deities in particular, but he would have a like strong background in religions and their different like penetration into different parts of society and like the different uh, gods and their titles and things like that. So, Especially because of their relationship to magic. So I'll say this, and this would also apply then. We'll we'll go back and, and change um, whether or not, like, or I will I will offer the information, and then you guys can decide if this is something you think your characters would know. But uh, yeah. it was often it was often said, uh, you know, that back before the war, um, when the gods were not so. Uh, Trivialized, marginalized, or or when they were when they were more a, a, a focal point of uh, a mortal's existence, um, it is said that the gods had uh, favored individuals or or right hand men or women or uh, individuals who would counsel or or be the naysayers to these gods, essentially like uh, like a, a divine counsel, as it were. Um, and although this particular name doesn't mean anything to you the 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 degree to which this this particular area was like kind of a, the the attempt to hide it um the 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 unique phrasing the the glyphs all of this speaks to uh a, the likelihood that whoever is entombed in the room that you're you're looking you're seeking to enter is likely one of those someone who was likely very close to a deity at some point and uh, and was paid proper respects in death by having this kind of dedicated space made up to them. Does that make sense? Good. Is that, is that good? Yes, it does. Um, so, uh, folks, this guy or gal, they, um, they appear to have been some kind of avatar, a handmaid, or a, uh, not exactly servant, perhaps chosen, of one of the gods. Uh, an arrangement that was much more common before the Great War. At this point, uh, if you turn, you'll see uh, somehow Dr. Jones has reproduced the pipe in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> and he's like, fascinating, fascinating. Uh, I do suspect this is the shrine to Namtar. So a disciple of death, of judgment? Intriguing. We must continue. Okay. Stands um, you, before you, go ahead. 
No, uh, I want to do something, but if you want yeah. to describe something first. What is it? I would like to perceive, so not touching things, but visually investigating mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. urns. Is there anything unique about any of them or or them altogether? Kind of looking uh, over. Uh, looking over them, you see that they are they are unadorned, very basic looking urns, sealed in wax. Um, each of them has like a little a little sigil on it that looks similar to the sigil that was born outside the room, but each one has like a, 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 a just a mild alteration to it. All six of them are slightly different. Just ever so slightly. So essentially, it's that same shrine, that same glyph that looks like that that one outside the room that that told you this might be some sort of tomb room, um, but each one may have like, for example, like a little dot in a different place around the shrine. It's just the slightest little difference. I think on that for a second. Mm hmm. Is anyone doing anything else? Are you guys checking out the door or sniffing around or doing anything? I've been told not to touch anything. This is true. This is true. Don't touch. No toques. No toque. I am going to investigate whether these doors are sealed or not. Please do. Please do. I have a suspicion that these six urns are either containing six shares the ashes of this individual or the ashes of their six uh, helpers, if you will. Uh, you know, for every priest, there are typically altar assistants, followers. Um, but I'm not sure which is which, but they are distinct. Gulliver wants to use his knowledge of arcana to try to figure out if these objects and this dead guy seem enchanted in any way or magical i rolled a 13 by the way oh my god i rolled a seven i'm doing terribly well part of the reason why you rolled a seven is because the there is nothing in this room to help you indicate what it is the doors are still locked the presumably the 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 person to whom this little phrase speaks of is in the room beyond the doors. So from a seven trying to ascertain if there's any arcana or otherwise anything interesting through bronze doors is you can't really tell that anything at all. Um, gotcha. The doors themselves have no arcana whatsoever. You don't perceive any arcana seeping in through the cracks underneath the door or anything like that. The room that you're in has no arcana to speak of. Um, but being but but that's what you can get on a seven. On a thirteen, as you look around the door, right? You're looking at the door itself. Yeah, the double doors. Yes. Um, one moment. Um, ah, uh, this. Okay, I found what I was looking for. Um, for Doctor Four. Um, yeah. So the the there is a the the urns are sealed with beeswax. Um. Uh, and and they weigh. If uh, if you were to pick them up, they have uh, quite a bit of weight to them. Um, on a thirteen, uh, as you look around the door, you see that uh, you rolled a what? A perception check. Investigation. Investigation. As you look through the door, with with the torch in hand. You do see a slight glint, a slight reflection of something above the door. You can't tell what it is exactly, but it looks as if whatever reflected the light might somehow be be wedged into the door, or um, or or fixed to the door in some way. Um, but besides that, the door. Uh, do you do you try to open the door or anything? Or are you just like tell me how you're investigating? Like talk me through this. So it's that usual like he will try to see if the door opens. If not, do the usual like check the seams. Do, you know, mm -hmm. lots of touching. Mm -hmm. 
You try the door. Yeah. The door knob turns. It opens. It is not locked. Uh, knowing this is a tomb, he won't swing the door open, but once he kind of turns the knob and sees it opens, he just says, well, that's not normal. You swing it open? No, I said he does not. Oh, okay, swing. okay, okay. Just wanted to make sure. Uh, yeah, you, as you touch the doorknob, you see that it opens, and you see a glint of something reflected above the door frame. So yeah, so he uh, just said, well, that's not normal. Uh, as the door opens, that catches Dr. Ford off guard, for sure. Um, she's been pretty... I mean, she's, she, she, you know, she's got her game face on. She's, like, doing her thing in here, but, like, deep down... Kind of fucking terrified because she really she's had her own misgivings about namtor and her in her backstory for for reasons that none of you know uh but she will um spontaneously as you say like that's not normal and the door cracks she'll just like say a short little one-liner prayer of namtor like sort of something that followers from Namtor might be sort of like a for the churchgoers in the house would be like a peace be with you kind of kind of like that but but like she'll she'll give like a like a little like we'll say peace the uh, peaceful rest or something maybe is the line but she'll just sort of say that as the door opens I don't know if that does anything but she'll just that'll just leave her lungs without even really realizing it is until mm -hmm. she's already mm -hmm. said it. Um. So you have, you open the door and and what? Like, you you know, like you start pushing, then he just stops. Right. Just seeing if. Waiting. Roll listening. a perception check for me. Mm -hmm. I'd I'd like we'll to say... listen in. Listen in to. Wait. As you're attempting to push the door. Oh, I've stopped moving it. In that fraction of a fraction of a fraction of a gesture to open it. Um, just as you're pushing it open, um, you hear you hear Dr. Ford whisper something under her, her breath, and it makes you hold still. Uh, but from that tiny little bit, uh, you, you, uh, you see the little reflection on the top shift ever so slightly. At this point, I don't know if you guys remember, but Dr. Joe's specialty is traps, puzzles, things like that. And the one thing he knows for sure, and he's certain in his soul, that every tomb is sealed. It is never left open. So just seeing it crack open, just even the slightest with no work, he's stopped. At this point, he just kind of, you see him kind of push back his jacket a bit while still holding the knob with one hand. You see him unclick the, th the leather thing holding his revolver, pull it out slowly. It kind of leans to the side. Shorty, prepare yourself. Shorty pulls out a little dagger from his sleeves. What are we expecting? Everyone, I don't think this will end well if I finish opening this door. Or even if I try to close it. Gulliver is casually drawn his axe. I suppose we should open it. She'll draw Come her. Come on, better screen. late than never. And he just goes forward and opens it. I'm still holding. <laughs> you just kick it open. <laughs> Portals! Yeah. Oh, I guess you're in front of me. I love your reference, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Best character ever. Uh, Word. What, what character is that from? A good place? No, never heard. Yeah, he's in that's Mendoza. a great show. Uh, Dr. Jones, you're holding the door. You you give everyone the, the cautionary, like, prepare yourselves. Uh, Prendergast being somewhat impatient or hot-headed or... Impatient. Patient? How do you push the door while he's still holding it? Uh, I mean, if it's a outward-facing door, I, like, pull it back and kind oh, no, of edge past him. In. If it in. pushes in, then I just sort of like nudge past him and Push go it. out that way. 
I'll turn up the door. You all hear as the door gets fully pushed open. Uh, you all hear with, for a moment here. And please make all of you, please make constitution saving throws. Oh, shit. Constitution? 18. I'm going to die. Let me know who rolled lower than a 10. Constitution, you say? Let me double check, but yes. Um, Ford rolled a 9. Um, Luckily. Yes. Uh, constitu seven. Constitution saving throws, please. Twelve. Just let me, tell me if you rolled under a 10. Okay. I did. I rolled critically under a 10. Damn, you got to switch dice. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'm off. I'm off. Switch up my D20 here. Uh -oh. <laughs> um, Doctor Jones is holding the door. Prendergast, in a moment of of, of impatience, like let let's get this over with. Pushes the door open. Uh, the door swings. Uh, lighter, light, perhaps lighter than it seemed like it would, given the weight and heftiness of all the other doors in the space. For some reason, this door may, flew in a little easier than you anticipated. <laughs> And behind the door, you hear, uh, and without warning, Dr. Jones falls unconscious on the floor. Oh, no. Oh, no. I rolled no. under 10, too. Am I also knocked out? Right, zero light points? No, no. Just unconscious? You're just unconscious. Oh, sorry, both of us or just, just Dr. Jones? Did you roll under a 10 as well? Yeah, I rolled a 9. <laughs> yeah, you also fall unconscious as well. Damn, both the scholars. Mm-hmm, <laughs> mm-hmm. Down. Yep. Okay. Doctor's down. What do we? What do I see? As you, as as uh, uh, actually, I will do this as well. Like what happened um, from my perspective? You can roll a medicine check for me if you want to investigate the situation. Well, also, like, how did it feel when I successfully avoided whatever happened here? Um, like what feel it? Yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, give me two seconds. Let's see if I found anything that would save me here. Um, we unconscious or asleep? I will tell you after some checks. Okay, because that matters for me. Yeah, yeah. Um, for research purpose. I'm, a, I'm an elf. You, uh, you look over the bot. Those of you, uh, uh. Shorty and Prendergast, you look over the bodies. Um, Quick question. Yes. This thing we rolled against, was it a trap? Mm hmm Only reason I ask, one of my feats gives me advantage to avoid and resist traps. Okay, so... Oh, we'll... yeah. That sounds Black good. Twist. 18. Okay, so, darling... <laughs> Dr. Ford, my dear, you fall unconscious alone. Uh, and you are indeed <laughs> unconscious. Um, as the as the three of you kind of look over, you jostle her, um, you check her vitals are, are the vitals are consistent. Uh, she won't come to, but she's breathing slowly and steadily, uh, as if she's asleep. What did it like feel like? Me falling unconscious? No, no us us. us, us not falling unconscious but being affected by the effect a moment after uh, everything happening all at once you hear the tsh, and then it's a moment later you all kind of smell um something that might have might smell we imagine it might smell maybe a little sweet um and the moment that all of you kind of smell this maybe sure do you smell it first because you're closer to the ground but mm -hmm. um then dr uh dr jones and prendergast as you smell it uh at the same time dr ford you all kind of smell it at the same time. Maybe you have a look of a, like a look amongst you of like, you, like what is this? And then Doctor Ford falls unconscious. Uh, before you, go ahead. No, I, I don't want to. I don't want to rush. So just let me know like if you guys are continuing to tend. Like, what do you guys want to do? You want to walk into the room? Are you tending to Doctor Ford while she's unconscious? I'm gonna do a quick. Um... That makes sense. Yeah, I guess why not. Medicine check to see if I can figure out what just happened. Mm -hmm. Why do I keep using this one? I rolled the one again. Mm -hmm. You ain't noticed shit. Here, take, take mine. Take mine. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. 
she is certainly unconscious. Um, you have seen unconscious people before. This. You get a sense, you, for some reason, uh, some kind of intuitive sense, even on a net one, that this unconsciousness is uh, a little... It doesn't feel good. I'm, I'm, oh, trying no. to, I'm trying to, like, it's a fine balance of honoring, like, low roles in that ones versus the fact that you are older human beings who have experienced life and are doctors. So if it seems like I'm not giving you, like, critical ones, is because I'm also taking into account the fact that you don't suddenly become babies on a net one. Mm. Um, so, yeah, it's just a little tricky, but yeah. Gotcha. Yeah, right? It's just like, not one. Ooh, mm. and then that's it. Mm. Start talking like Sims characters. Mm -hmm. um, Doctor Jones is sitting there like, uh, our, our resident. You got a bad feeling about this. A oh. resident, yeah. <laughs> a resident expert of uh, biology should not be the one unconscious at this moment. Mm. Certainly not. Uh, she's also our medic. Yeah, this is all around. If any of us had taken the hit, would have been possibly a bit easier to deal with. Uh, I have an herbalism kit, but I'm not great at medicine. Is somebody else good at medicine? What does what, what your profession sound like? It's also a two, three for me. I can take a look. It, go for it. I, I can take a look. It's like, I, I will it's provide like, the herbalism kit, and if that could count as like a help action, unless yeah. they have one already. Yeah. Uh, so you, so how's this working? Uh, I can go for a, a, gonna do a, a medicine, medicine check? check. Yeah, yeah, go for it. And you're gonna herbalism kick. What does that do? Uh, it basically enables you to like stabilize wounds and stuff. But yeah. you have the help action, and if you roll a net twenty, we'll see. Got it. So just one roll, right? Uh, with, with Michael, um, sorry, uh, Prendergast is giving you the help action, so you can roll twice and take the higher. Gotcha. Yeah, it could have, like, smelling salts in it or something. You I don't have know. a tray? You gotta get your tray. I mean, slight metagaming Six comment, plus, but... You... That's nine. Oh. Wow, oh. this is... Yes. Yeah, uh... Nine. What were you, you gonna say? You can, you, you, can, you can see that she doesn't seem to be, you know, in the in the in the minutes that have passed since she's fallen, and you're all kind of like standing around her body, looking around, talking to her. Uh, you you get closer, you don't perceive any change in her situation. So whatever it is that's affecting her doesn't seem to be destroying her or or you know draining her of anything. She seems like just as alive as if she was standing there talking to you. Uh, Dr. Jones looks up at the uh, reporter. Uh, you you were a, a, a veteran, yes. Yeah. Do you do you have any medical knowledge and any uh, field triage knowledge that might help us? Well, uh, I'm certainly not a medic, and uh, I've been worked on plenty, but uh, this doesn't look like she's amputated. <laughs> So, uh, what do we, what do we, cause, cause Octavia is missing and uh, like she's amputated. Yeah. So she's saying yeah. like, if, if, if it was a, like, if it was a cut or a slash or an amputation, like maybe Octavia could like try to bandage cause she's yeah. had it done to her, but like, okay. she, this is not the case. She's not like out of her element. Yeah. Uh, I can shoot I the horse or I can cut its leg off. That's it. You all know I have a healer's kit on me cause I've used it on you all so if you do want to uh, try that it only restores hit points so I'll, I'll play your play your comment so i don't know if that would really help but um technically like that's okay. i mean i guess the, uh, that this guy gave you uh can i take the herbalism kit oh, no no the medicine kit for uh uh, uh smell salt yeah you can do that if you want all right um, oh, i want to check we'll say that you look through you find the smelling salts you try them uh, Myself. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so awake now. Well, I'm ready. All right, your turn. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I wake up. Like They've all just been getting high for an hour. Work. They work. Got don't it. To work either. On me though, they they do great. Uh, you gotta. I mean, except for a moment, it was the only thing you could smell, and and so you were suddenly like not smelling the poisonous air. 
Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> but that's about it. Score. <laughs> Not giving these back. Oops. Well, guys, I think it's what do, what do I see in the room, especially with regard to what might have done this? Oh, yeah, we didn't really look in the room that it, no, that, yeah, no. uh, as you as kind of guys, as you kind of step into the room, um, if you're I'm assuming you're looking for what did it, you turn around and look behind the door and you see there is a small, a small glass vial laying broken on the floor. Its contents mm. spilled out, and as you get closer to it, it smells more strongly of the of the of the sweet fragrance that you initially inhaled at the moment where Doctor Ford fell. Mm. I think I got we got our cul culprit, whatever this thing is. Uh -huh. Um, is there anything else in the room? Yeah, if you step into the uh, step into the room. I'll put you here. You see ahead of you is a somewhat circular chamber. Um, every so often, there are tall, skinny columns rising up out of the ground, almost like skinny forearms, holding up the ceiling like skeletal fingers. Uh, everything is... Um, uh, uh, past, the do past the doors, uh, cut out uh, uh, of... You see um, uh, calcite and stalactites covering bits and areas of the wall. Buttresses rise from the corners, bone-colored, shot through with black. Um, triangular stone pillars support the high ceiling. Occupying the center of the chamber is a colossal monument resembling a giant table, covered on all sides with intricate carvings from what you can tell at this distance with the waning light from Dr. Jones's light who's still in the vestibule, you see that there are there is something carved by way of light and shadow. There are figures carved around the base of of this massive table in the middle. Um, <clears throat> Dr. Jones looks at the reporter. Stay with Dr. Ford. Our answers must be in the room. Shorty, let's, let's go. First thing I'll do is actually look at the uh, vial to see if it has a uh, yeah move your token any kind of labels or <laughs> no whatnot. labels whatsoever on the vial. So I'm gonna start moving towards the big old table. Mm -hmm. Please incorporated, made in China. <laughs> you said made in China. <laughs> H O N Mexico. Um, thanks for leaving my body alone. Mexico. Appreciate it. Dishwasher safe. Mm -hmm. Organic, GMO free. Mm -hmm. um, thanks for not abandoning my body, by the way. I appreciate it. <laughs> we would never. <laughs> we <laughs> would never. Like somebody with me. So you come back and like, oh, she's gone. Nope. She, she must have been eaten by spiders. I can move again to the room. Oh, because she's, she's not going to pass this up. She's been waiting for this. The doctor's fine. Oh, then I would I would carry the doctor. Oh, she did leave. She's me. not being brought with. She's just taking a quick look. She's Wait, is that Octavia? Yeah. I love. I just love the idea yeah, of Doctor yeah, Jones yeah, like yeah, yeah. with her, and she takes one look at me and goes, "Nope." <laughs> That's right. <laughs> this is not news. Look, this is news. Look, she. This is she's in her element, and she has a lot of respect, and she usually does what she's told. But this is the first time anyone's going in the room, and she's not going to not yeah. be there. So she went to do a quick casing to see what she can see, and now she's basically standing here at the door. Prender by the um, Prender guys, did you stay behind? Or are you still? I would. Uh, You're by the door. Her, I would carry her body with us. If You're bringing me in. She is doing that. Octavia came back. She okay, just wanted okay. to look around. Yeah. Actually, oh no. Never mind. All right. Well, Gulliver would. Uh... Well, Dr. Ford, how much do you weigh? Would you say you're like light figure, or are you laden with many bags? Is that what you ask? <laughs> uh, let me see. She, she, she's been in the military. She's not. She's not shy about her her stats. 
Um, she's 170 pounds, and okay. she is she's she's six four. Uh, so she's she's tall and and pretty like, she's got some muscle yeah, to her. You uh, um, uh, you can't tell because you're unconscious, but Octavia like tries to pick you up a little bit to see if she can throw you on her shoulder so she can walk around. But yeah. you're you're, too, you're you're bag lady, and she can't carry you in your bags. Yeah, so she's gonna stay fine. here at the door, keeping. It. She's gonna she's gonna move up a little. She can't not be in the scene. I'm I'm 200 pounds with all my items on me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, it's Damn, a lot. Pounds of gear. Pretty decent. Okay. Carry. Get out of here yeah. with that shit. I don't want 50 pounds of gear. Whoa. Um, okay, so we're gonna so let's I would take just follow them hand on my axe. A five minute break just for bathroom refills, that kind of stuff. Before we continue. Yes, yes. Oi. Sure. You are walking through the room. Uh are you what are you paying attention to? Are you just looking through the room or are you actually um looking at the the table in the middle like what where what's uh, what's your attention right now i went directly to the table to see if it tells me anything about the room see if i see any more vials okay um one moment uh the block beneath the slab is hollow hang on one minute uh nope too soon um da, da, da. see this is so much words mm. i just need to cut some of these words um uh, okay, as you get close, you see there are there are glyphs on the bottom of the of this giant table, uh, also written in Alamin. As you stand there looking at them for a moment, you you see that they say, "Ah, defilers! Now you shall join me in my eternal resting." Uh, as for the monument itself, it is constructed from several parts. There's a great stone slab, 20 feet long by 10 feet wide, that rests upon um, a thick monolith of uh, rock, similar, um, uh, supporting, each one of these is supporting six huge blocks of domalite, which is a kind of sturdy rock, I guess. Uh, they don't really say. Dolomite? Dolomite, D O L O M I T E. Every component of this, every side, every facet is covered with intricate carvings and glyphs. Um, the top of the slab is uh, depicts um, a, a slender male figure uh, made out of uh, knotted serpents, engraved alongside. Uh, engraved alongside the illustration are glyphs identical to those found on the floor. Uh, in addition to this, um, yeah, there is a there is a pot that you see that has been placed on top, which is not in the picture, um, but it is a pot w of what looks like a withered, dried plant. Can I do a nature check to see if I recognize the plant? Yes. Did you say a withered, dried plant? Yes, I did. Oh. Ugh. Six. The only thing you can tell about this plant is that it's like nothing you've ever seen before. Alright. I'm leaning. Give it a sniff. Oh. <laughs> it doesn't smell like anything. It smells like dust. But you pass out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's a possibility. Oh, was that the only message written around the... Uh... Mm. There are glyphs on the floor, and there are glyphs on the side, besides the ones with the message. The glyphs on the top show a date. The glyphs on the bottom look like numbers in ascending order. What's the date? Can I tell? Make an intelligence check for me. 14. As you study the stone, as you study the glyphs all around, based on your research and your experience with Alamin, you can tell that the numbers at the bottom seem to be in ascending order, and you you extrapolate that they likely start at 1 and go up to 9 and then 0. Using the glyphs on the floor, you see that the glyphs on the on the on the on the top some of them match the ones on the floor, but in different order. And as you take that moment 
to go back and forth, sketching, drawing, looking, you see that the, the numbers on the top come out to be 54-3-9. Do I see uh, any glyphs with numbers anywhere else in the room? Mm -mm. You do see as you look around the room, there is, there are, there is artwork painted into the ceiling along with various like carving and things of that nature. Prendergast, what are you doing while Ford is investigating the glyphs? Jones. Prendergast, you alive? I'm sorry. Um, I got How dare you be doing something else while I'm playing? I wasn't. I, was, I got distracted. I blame my brain. Um, the uh, I'm sorry. Did you say again what you asked No, you're me? fired. Shorty, what are you doing? Well, well, uh, <laughs> while Jones is investigating the glyphs. Shorty's touching stuff. Oh, what are you touching? Uh, he touches the table. The table? No, it's yeah, like... it looks like a table. Well, to him, it looks like a table. Yeah. He touches the table. Uh, um, he is kind of looking around at, uh, uh, these pillars. Yeah. Uh, um. I don't know. He just up close. You see that they they have occasionally little bugs on them, spiders chittering around, mm. um, many legged centipedes, things of that nature. Mm. Uh, you see old spider webs with uh, long since dead and. De <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's okay. It's okay. Hey, why did you? Gast is uh, kind of. Doing a little perimeter, just to like get a sense of if there's any other ways out of here, and if there's anything going on in the corners. Uh, the corners look dusty and decayed. You don't see any evidence of anything else in here. Um, you also notice, based on the shadows cast by Doctor Jones, as he's moving around the central table and examining the glyphs, that there is artwork on the ceiling. Um, there is no way in or out of the room besides the entrance that you came through. You don't sense any other, uh, you don't see any other doors or exits or windows or anything like that. Looks like this is a dead end. Shorty, since he's short, uh, is going to kind of examine this table mm -hmm. uh, on the top and the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, I guess he's going to probably be using his hands, so that would be investigation? Yes, please. Yes. What is, what is Dr. Ford dreaming about? I, I was just going to ask you that. Am mm. I dreaming? Am I, is it just, do I, do I have any sense of time or am I just knocked out? You're unconscious. So you got. So you tell me what's happening. Are you are you just in a in a in a dead zone in your brain, or is your mind taking a trip somewhere? Uh, she. So, elves do not sleep; they trance. But she does tend to dream in her trance, and she was, she was raised in a religious family, and so that was, um, growing up. That's how you connect with your with your higher power, whoever, whoever it is, you go into your trance and you meditate just like, just like people do in our world. And, um, and so, yeah, she, I think her, her body and her brain would instinctively as she knocked out, would just kind of go there, go to that meditative state. Um, and she's, she's trying to talk to her, to her nature. God. Yes. Mm -hmm. Goddess. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll return. When you rolled, <laughs> Well, I rolled uh, 17. As you're looking around, you see the glyphs. Um, and just as, you know, as Shorty, do, as Shorty does, kind of touching things, you happen to accidentally touch one of the glyphs on the base of the statue. And you feel it move just a little bit. It responds to your touch, one of the glyphs on the, on the base. <clears throat> Shorty looks at it. Oh! <gasps> Because he's actually found something. What this is usually Dr. Jones's territory. <laughs> so he, well, he's hoping he's gonna be proud. <laughs> so it's on he's the so proud. Yeah. No, it's on the base of the table. So is this happening below me? Because I'm. 
<laughs> yeah, because we will say the table, the top part comes out a little bit. Yeah, he's looking up at him like. You see his ass sticking out just past the table. Like, yeah, shorty, you you don't need to yell. I'm I'm right next to you. <laughs> look, look, and then he kind of does the same thing again, uh, and it does the give. Yeah. yeah. At that, Dr. John looks around. Is it one of the number ones? Yes. Which number is he pushing? Which number are you pushing? Toward the beginning or toward the end? Um, towards the... Well, let's see. Where are you on the map? So you're back here. So let's say yeah. this would be the low numbers and this would be the high numbers, just for... Low numbers. So what number did you... Yeah. You push the number. First, second, third one. Which one are you pushing? Second one. So he pushes up the last one. Interesting. Yes, yes. Puts up the papers. Steps back. All right, Shorty. Are you ready? Yes, sir. Push the fifth one. Ooh. Push the fourth one. Oh. Push the third one. Oh. Oh. He kicks that one. <laughs> oh, I think he kicks your dick. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was reading my book. Kind of a <laughs> little shorty thrust. <laughs> I was like looking down and I just see, oh, and it's like, oh no. I got that for a party. Shorty, <laughs> put that away. <laughs> Go on then. You kick it? Well, no, he gives it like a little, not, not like a forceful kick, but it's just like a, you know, I guess he's happy that he's helping, so he's like, you know, it's like a little... Yeah, yeah, it yeah. looks like you're thrusting at it. But okay, go ahead. Love it. <laughs> yeah. Okay. And now the ninth one. Maybe it takes a second to get to that side. And then... <laughs> Jesus. So extra. Um, as the last glyph is depressed, a grating sound issues forth, and the top slab slides back a bit. The tomb lid can then be opened. Seems like it can be opened. At this point, it's Jody. Bars. <laughs> yeah, <that happened>. yeah. <laughs> Big ass crowbar. Mm -hmm. so we'll There's a glint that goes across it like a katana. Oh, yeah. yeah, exactly. Uh, can you both roll strength with advantage from the crowbars, please? While you're doing that, um, let's go back to uh, to the dream state. What do you? What's happening in your dream? I imagine Dr. Ford, uh, when she 14. makes a solid connection, yeah, 14. Um, which is not, it's not all the time, and it's been especially difficult recently, um, she goes to a, in her mind, she goes to this forested grove, um, and there's a pool of water she walks up to uh, and she speaks to the water uh, and she's never seen the form of her goddess uh, typically she'll ask questions and speak to it and the water will ripple sort of in the voice of the reply uh, and she's had a few conversations like this um, but it has been years um, and ever since she'll go and ask questions and she'll sort of when she comes out of the meditative trance after having received sort of no replies she'll instead sort of have a little gut feeling answer to her question or, or something but it is it's definitely become distant and that's been very upsetting to her lately really feels like she's losing it and she doesn't know are you trying to ask a question at this present moment she is yes so so her question so she would go to the pool um and say uh dear goddess by verdant Guardian, we want so badly to protect that which is sacred in these ruins. Where do we look? Where do we stay safe? We'll pin it right there. On a 23, right? 12 and a 12 and a, what? Uh, it was a 14 and a 12, right? 14 yeah. and a 12. So on a, on a 26... Uh, Shorty, how do you manage to help push this, considering it's it's a little lower to the ground? 
and uh, and it's lower to the ground. Well, you're lower yeah. to the ground. Yeah. You're shorter. Yeah. And Dr. Jones is standing at full height, so he's pushing. How are you? Well, he's using. We're using crowbars. Crowbars, right? Yeah. So how are you? How are you crowbarring from your vantage point? Um, so very carefully because he is putting it and it's kind of hanging there. And then it's like, uh, okay, <laughs> okay, okay, okay. I love that. I love that. Um, you guys both start making like making headway, pushing the lid of this off. Um, I'm gonna hold there. I'm gonna go to Prendergast for a minute. Prendergast, you've been surveying the perimeter of this. Um, as you're as you're kind of standing there looking around, remind me, do you have dark vision? Uh, let me find out. I'm pretty sure yes. I think you do. Yeah, as a as a half orc, I think I do. Okay. Um, yes, I do. Okay. You are able to see these these paintings uh, pretty easily be- thanks to the light of uh, the light from Doctor Jones as he's moving around. But occasionally he'll pass in a way where his light casts direct light onto the paintings and the murals that you're seeing kind of etched. You know, like, you know how like vaulted ceilings will have these like these like uh, curved edges. Mm -hmm. The paintings are painted into these curved edges. And so slowly as they've been kind of fiddling around with this, you've been making your way around and you realize that the paintings along the ceiling actually portray um, they're a mural. And as you go making your way around the room, you see that the murals actually kind of mirror each other. Um, uh, uh, You see there's a series of murals. um, These murals depict uh, an eternal dance between two deities from what it looks like. One side of of the ceiling, there is a mural depicting a cosmic storm uh, painted in, in, in faded shades of orange and red. Uh, you see, uh, you see the painting has kind of sharp, sharp, straight lines and sharp edges. It looks, it, it, it gives a, a feeling of, of, of chaos and, um, and this, and there's something discordant about the particular tones that are used in this particular mural. Uh, you see in the heart of the storm, a female figure is coming forth from it, draped in a black robe outstretching her hand you see uh you, you see past the arm uh, a skeletal hand is is shown just off just beyond the the cuff of that robe as you make your way to the other side you see a similar but contrasting mural um another storm of of cosmic proportion but this particular it, uh, mural from what you can tell based on the light cast from Dr. Jones you see shades instead of orange and red you see blues and greens you see another figure another uh, another robed female figure this one draped in uh, in a faded white also with her hand out uh, but you see instead of a skeletal hand like the, the mural on the other side this particular hand is, is full of youth and life it's a, a plump uh, a plump, um, full hand reaching out. As you're looking at them, you get the sense of harmony and balance between these two murals, uh, almost as if they're they're eternally reaching out for each other, but not able to touch. Um, uh, and then, as you make your way to the back end of the room, you see there's actually a battle axe wedged into the wall. Around the base of the battle axe, you can see um, a, a leather handle, and there's tape on there's there's kind of tape on it as well. Occasionally, as you're looking and inspecting this battle axe, once again the light from Doctor Jones, as he and Shorty are working to push this the 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 lid of this table off. Once in a while, you glimpse a shadow cast by this battle axe onto the wall. Doesn't look like a traditional shadow you would see. It looks almost like a hand reaching out. I speculatively sort of grasp the handle of the battle axe. It is wedged tightly. Yeah, I didn't try to undo it. Do I feel anything or see anything when I hold Um, it? One moment. 
Uh, uh, one other thing that you notice as you get close to the axe is that uh, as you're looking at it, in those in those brief moments where you see a strange hand being cast from the shadow, as opposed to the typical uh, the typical shadow of a, uh, of the axe itself, you feel a, a sense of cold run down your back, a, a chill, uh, something slightly uh, like feels a little bit unnerving. You can, if you want, let me know. You can attempt to pull it out. Just, uh, ge just generally kind of touching it and tugging at it, you can feel that it is sternly wedged into the wall. Definitely re would require a little bit of strength to pry it out. Um, Does it seem magical? Can I check that? Sometime? You can make an arcana check if you want. Damn, I am rolling terribly. That is a seven. I am going to use a thing, though, which is my uh magic awareness open mm -hmm. my present awareness to the presence of concentrated magic i know the location of any spell or magic item within 60 feet of you that isn't behind total cover and then i would learn what school of magic it belongs to mm -hmm. use one. Nice. Uh, he sort of closes his eyes his like hair kind of scraggly hair like kind of it's normally like kind of curly. It like straightens out a little bit, um, mm -hmm. and he sort of lifts his hands to sense. With your eyes closed, getting a sense, it's almost as if you can communicate with that with the spirit of the axe. It is old and uh, and has seen a lot of battle, and you, uh, as you're kind of getting a sense for it, you sense that there is something magical. Focusing in, you find that there is um, evocation magic laced into the, the, the pieces of paper that seem to be uh, affixed to the base of this of this magic. Uh, there's evocation as well as transmu transmutation arcana laced into the paper attached to the base. The paper specifically? Yes. The paper, yes, but also in a sense where... the the, the paper and the axe are one. Gotcha. All right, I'm going to try to heave it out. Do it. Uh, 20, unnatural. <laughs> unnatural 20. You... Uh, explain how you pull it out of the wall. Plants his feet. He, well, he puts his great axe away, plants his feet, takes both hands, firm grip, uh sort of <clears throat> understated grunt and he just Ow! uh you pull with such force that you are pulled back a few paces and you kind of bump into the back of the wall in into the table there um uh, you have now the mace in your hand was it an axe, Sorry, an axe. Okay. all right so i should uh, maybe learn something more about it when we Rest next. I can attune myself, perhaps. Um, that's the way you want to play it, unless you want me to just know what it does already. Um, you are correct in in sensing that there is perhaps some attunement required. However, due to the nature of this tomb and the fact that it is unlikely you'll be taking rests, because the longer you stay, speaking of which, you each take four points of uh, poison damage. The longer you stay, the more damage you take, and staying four or eight hours here would cause probably as much damage as you would be healing. And the cleric um, is uh, asleep. <laughs> yep. And the cleric is asleep. Uh, um, do I take those four points as well? You are unconscious, but you're breathing. Um, yeah, so there's that. And then I'm going to get to you guys in just one last moment. Um, Dr. Ford, you had a question that you were asking the water? You remind me what that question yes. was? I, I asked um, for assistance in finding any any sacred arcane items and or or guidance on protecting my these people. The water in this pond tremors. It trembles. It may be a little bit more deliberately than you've experienced in a long time. And that's including the last times that it actually tremored. Um, you get an, like an instinctual feeling that something about this shrine, although it is dedicated to Namtar, is somehow 
also strengthening the connection to uh, um, Nam 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 Ninersag. Nam Yes. Ninersag. Ninersag. Yes. Um, I wrote that name like fifteen times today, and it still evades me. Uh, Ninersag. Um, there is a sense that um, uh, you you feel it like within you a slight sense of unease. There is. Uh, there is a yes and a hurry in the energy that comes as an answer to your question. Um, gentlemen, you push the lid back. Um, oh, can I ask a real quick question? Sure. At, at, at that, can I try to wake myself up? With that, I mean, I, I would like to get back to business for sure, so... Naturally, she pulls herself out of her own meditation. So can I try? The, the meditation that you're in isn't self-induced. You didn't. Right, but she doesn't that. really know that. So I was just yeah. asking, could, could she give it a shot? It, um, it could it could just fail instantly. But you, no, you can you can certainly. How, how would you try to do that? Uh, I mean, in in her meditative state, she typically. Um, the way that she likes to wake herself up is she turns from the pond and runs through the woods. And as she runs, that tends to bring her back. So she's going to try to do that. Okay. She's running. You start running through the woods. You keep running. You start to feel like you've been running longer than you normally run before you wake up. And another few moments later, you find yourself approaching the pond from the other side. Don't like that. Uh, you gentlemen push past the um, the thing. Um, as you finally push back the this lid, with a terrible crash, you you hear like the weight finally tumble back as the tumble back the the the, the tomb not necessarily Ooh. breaking the pot however goes falls to the floor and, and scatter and, and shatters um the dirt and the 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 little plant kind of falling out of it and onto the ground um the block beneath the slab is hollow and inside is a crumbling skeleton decked out in decayed finery it appears to have been a man of t of taller than average stature, obviously of great importance based on the gems and other uh, adornments of obvious value are on and around the body. Covering the skull is a mask of jade with crown, with uh, crowery shell eyes and obsidian pupils. About the corpse is a necklace of jade pendant um, with a uh, about the corpse's neck is a jade pendant carved with the face of a human-like bat. Human-like bat. Human-like bat. Bat! You yell. Ben -na -na -na. Ben -na 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 -na. Michael, you it's are determined to ruin my audio, aren't you? You keep yelling. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, I've spiked I the mic. You. I kill you. You should know better. I'm just trying to help your auditing prowess. <laughs> editing, <laughs> rather. Not auditing. I just, my audio I just put together editing and audio to make auditing, but auditing is already a thing. <laughs> I mean, I get it, but also please don't, because I hate editing. No, yeah, I'm sorry. That was a joke. I I want to make this as easy as possible for you. Then no more yelling bats. Okay. Or yell bats, but softly. I'll theatrically. I'll do a theatrical yell. <laughs> I was doing a real yell. <laughs> uh -huh. Stage yell. Stage whisper. All right, um, you skeleton, gentlemen. Oh. Ah. Dr. Jones will <laughs> instinctively examine the uh, bat pendant. It is a beautiful necklace uh, wrapped around a skeletal neck. <laughs> Very descriptive. <laughs> Listen, guys. Oh, shit. Um, Gulliver's. Oh, sorry. Go for it. I was going to say, my magic awareness might be still active. The mm -hmm. end of my next turn, but we're not in turn-based. Mm -hmm. uh, I'll, I'll 
I'll not say that, I guess. What Maybe were you going to do? Six seconds. I was going to see if anything on this person was magical. It would have expired. You'd have to use it again. Okay. Can I do an Arcana check for the same thing? Yes. Are you guys checking for anything? Okay, we got a, we got another seven. Seven is my lucky number today. Yeah. Um, I have a plus five Arcana. Damn, so you're rolling twos all night? Wow. Um, Gulliver's having a bad day. He got he like fell down a hole. He's a grad student. He's not paid enough for this shit. And nobody's paid enough for this shit. <laughs> He's considering the union, you know. <laughs> In solidarity. Um, sure. Yeah. The, the the body, and he's just like, e. Doctor Jones. Uh, the bat necklace. The bat like necklace has two two tiny little gemstones for eyes, and you get the sense as you're looking around. It almost feels like the eyes are looking at you. Besides that, the skeleton itself is is is, is posed in a in a in a frame of repose. What was the name of the person on this tomb? Dolokes Popocolas. Doctor Jones will say his name, and say. Well, chap, we need your help. Just kind of... Nothing. No response. And then he very carefully reaches his hand in to the coffin, mm -hmm. touches, just kind of taps the bat. Nothing happens. He is now going to investigate the entire body. Okay. Oh, God. You've given me your two-itis. Oh. <laughs> so that's... Yeah. A... And terrible twos. As you look around the body, again, you, you see that the body is um, has a lot of trinkets and things around. Very valuable items kind of buried with this person. You do see toward the feet there are a few vials of what look like potion jars. And these potion jars have some dried dust in them. Any symbols on them? No. I am I am aware of the time. I know it's uh it's roughly ten thirty. Um I'm 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 looking for a good place to put a pin in this so and, and continue up. Uh but it's also, let me know if you want me to just put a pin now or if you want to try to uh, get a little further, you tell me. Up to y'all. Um, I got three hours on you. Yeah, remember so. what is an herb herbalism kit for? To heal. To heal, basically. To like heal. if you get a cut or a bruise or something basic, you can use an herbalism kit to remedy that. So you can't use it to kind of deduce what a, a, a thing is, like a liquid is? No. 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 What not could that, that be then? That would just be a medicine or. or I mean. Something check. I don't think there is or a kit. Like that. that would have to be like. Well, like, if it's not a kit, like just like a regular like. Like check. a check, yeah. yeah. Like a like um. If you're trying to deduce, that would be probably a. Intelligence. Maybe like or... a wisdom, intelligence, something along those lines. Um. You're trying to be a Scully, you know, taste the thing. It's blood. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's blood. Yeah, so that would probably be an intelligence check. Um, but please let me know if you think there's another check that would make sense. Um, I think that would make sense. I would like to do the same in that yeah. case. Yeah, so you can uh, both roll or give advantage. You can do the help action to give advantage. And they're all dried out. Mm-hmm. Right? Mm -hmm. All right, I got a 15. On what? On investigate. For what are you investigating? Uh, like for intelligence check in terms of like what these things are. Well, and like... What... Check, right? mm -hmm. no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, either way, it's the same mm -hmm. role. Because I have a plus two intelligence. Mm -hmm. uh, but like trying to figure out what they checking... are, if they're useful, or the whether... Jars at the feet? You're checking the jars that I mentioned at the feet? The jars, yep. On a 15... Um, these are, these are dried potions. 
um, and from what you know of potions, generally, I mean, potions are just kind of like, like herbs and liquid, right? Like these mm-hmm. are just dried herbs. So all I need is water, maybe to possibly make them work. Possibly. I say, hey, we may have found a. I don't know. Some these seem useful, and I'm gonna just take them and put them in my bag. They're po- they're probably I think they're dried potions, so you know maybe something in here would help the doc, the other doc. Sorry, doc. Um, I agree. I just don't want to make the situation worse. He would Gulliver would have already taken them <laughs> while he was saying this. I mean, nothing happens as a result of taking them. Yeah. Okay. No. Yeah. I mean, we shouldn't like drink them i guess we could try to figure out what they are maybe by scent certain herbs and dr jones back to where the uh the broken jar is see if there's any coloring or anything like that like what color the liquid or the thing that spilled out of it was uh it looks kind of orangish from the light based on, you know, it's already starting to dry, um, but it looks like it stained the floor a little orange. What does it smell like? And was it wet when it broke? It's... It was, it was more, yeah, it was a li- it was in liquid yeah. form. It broke um, and the fragrance uh, it smelled a little bit sweet. Okay. At that, uh, Dr. Jones is like, we will have to smell each of those jars before we add water to any of them. See if you can match the color as well. We want to avoid making more of that. Indeed. Smell check. Who's got the highest scent rating? I think we can carry your intelligence check of 17, right? You was a 17? Uh, Mine was a 15. 15. Uh, As you look at them, you do see uh, one of the jars. So one of the jars has more of that kind of orange-looking of a like the, the powder in the jar is of a similar tint of orange as the liquid that's on the floor that stained the floor. The other one, however, seems to have uh, the powder and it looks like a deep, a, a deep like purplish kind of like a like an amethyst kind of color, mm-hmm. almost black but purple. Okay. And you smell it, it smells a little bitter. Okay. And what was the first one like? The first one was of a similar orangish tint to as the, as the, yeah. as the broken jar. And it, it gave a very, very, very mild, but sweet-ish fragrance. So this orange one seems like it's the same stuff. The dark one seems like it's not that. So, I mean... I don't exactly want to just feed this <laughs> to Dr. Ford. Would it be better if I tried it first? I don't think we need you to ingest it. The first one seemed to work by simply getting the aroma. Mm. We'll add water, see if we could bring it close to her. She will either wake or not. Then we could move on. All right, sounds like a plan. Just wanted to sort of run that by everybody. Uh, could make her worse, but I mean, you know, there's the whole poison gas situation, so it's not as if things are great. Status quo. So yeah, uh, Gulliver will use his like rations to wet it a little bit. Be careful not to get any in his nose and waft it below Arabella's nose. Uh as you as you mix it up and as you're walking by, you notice that the, the when the fragrance from the jar with the orange contents, uh when you get to the area kind of close to the door but where that that um the fragrance that kind of like the smell that lingered from the the previous mm-hmm. jar that broke it seems to neutralize that that smell like it kind mm-hmm. of dissipates you don't smell it as you bring it closer um you see 
ever so slightly after a moment you kind of like do the smelling salt thing under arabella's nose mm -hmm. uh you see ever so slightly a little twitch in the eye arabella how do you wake up oh, yeah. hell yeah you guys are the best you you guys are amazing um this she'll she'll set up upright really quickly um and she'll she'll shout. I won't shout in my microphone, but she'll shout. Um, <clears throat> wake me up! Wake me up inside. Mm -hmm. we'll wake me up. Wake me up. September ends. Oh my god! Okay. Wake me up Jeez. when it's all over. I'm uh -huh. glad we're all the same generation here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, she'll she'll, she'll go. Wake me up. Oh, you you did you did you did. How many times were you looping around the loop? To, did you just keep running, or did you sit, or what did you do? She yeah, she kept trying to run into the woods. I would say when she came back to the pond the third time, um, she was actually she was feeling very desperate and panicky, and she was on her hands and knees down at the pond. And she was shouting into the pond to be like, do fucking do something. You're a god, right? <laughs> so. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, Love that's that. Awesome. Um, seeing Arabella wake up. Dr. Jones again. No one sees where he keeps getting this pipe, but the pipe is in his mouth. <laughs> and he puts his hand on uh, Shorty's shoulder and he's like, well done, my boy. That was you. What just happened? He, what? You opened your way in here, and she'll she'll sort of get up off the ground and kind of dust herself off and say thank you, and then she'll head into the room to look around at all the everything okay. that you all have been looking at. Amazing. Uh, you want to position your tokens for me? Yeah, let me. Put her on my crazy statuses. And I'm in. Just looking at everything. Uh oh. He... So I'm I headed this way, and I think the lid of the table fell off in this direction. Yeah. Um, do I see the smashed pot with the plant on the floor? Yeah. I, I take a closer look at that plant. Yes, you may. All right. Um, this one. I get advantage on that roll. <laughs> <laughs> For story purposes. No, he's, he's well, she's well rested, so. <laughs> uh, what did you roll? I rolled a, a, a nine with, um, well, yeah, with my efficiency, but it's not, it's not great. You don't have, you have um, you also know that this plant is unlike anything you've seen. Your mind flicks back to some, uh, to some paintings and some artwork you've seen that similarly, uh, that, that, that also depict a rather unique looking plant. You don't know if it's this, but... It's very interesting that this plant is, it's dried and decayed, and even still, it looks kind of unique. Um, um, I think this is a good place to put a pin in it. What do you guys think? And then next time we start and decide what you want to do with the, with old, with old skelly bones in the, in the thing, I, what do you think? Give me copper skeletons. Can I try something real quick before Absolutely. we? Absolutely. Please. Here we go. Can mm -hmm. I? She's gonna grab her gem and use a channel divinity. Ooh. Okay. Um. How many of those do I get at this level? I don't know. How many? I I don't know. I'm not sure. I get one per short rest. That's worth good. it. Um. I'm gonna use it. Uh. To present my holy symbol and charm plants so this okay. this interesting plant 
I can't talk to plants, but I can make plants my friend. Um, and just given that I, ha I know this plant's important, I don't know why, but the experience I just had and, you know, the urgency that my goddess just gave me. Yeah. Um, so she's, she's basically, yeah, I'm going to grab her symbol and, and ask the plant. She'll say, what are you? And see if it sort of comes to her. I think you roll something for this or, oh, it can fail a wisdom save and not be charmed by me. <laughs> um, I love this so much. That's I love this so much. However, you know what they say, we got to leave on a cliffhanger, right? Yeah, so all right. next time. Yeah, right. Dragon Ball Z. Oh, yeah. Cool. We promise it won't be another episode of charging up a spirit bomb. Yeah. Um, I'm leaving a note for myself. I've never tried to charm a plant before. I don't really know how this works. Do you have like a speak with plants thing? I know there's a speak with plants spell, but I don't, I don't know. Um, it. What was the question you asked? What are you or? What are, what you? are you? Yeah. Okay. To be Is continued. It, if it's what she thinks it could be, this could be the most important thing in the whole place. Damn. We don't know. Okay. We put... But she could be wrong. It could just be a dead plant. Who knows? We don't know. Find out next time. Oh. Find out next time. Relic After Lear. work adventurers. <laughs> After work adventures. Dun, dun, dun. Oh yes. Who may solve the mystery? We what's didn't. Our, we what's didn't our... do intros. We didn't do intros. Yeah, well, what's our sign off? Do we need we, we first we need to do intros and also we need a sign off. Well, well that's what we are. This the the reward for watching this far is learning about who we are. So who the fuck are we? Who are you guys? Oh no 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 no! As human beings. My name is Michael Carter. I am a writer and actor living in New York. Hit me up. I don't know. MichaelThomasCarter.com Why are you lying about your middle name, bro? It is my little middle name. Oh, no, it's Michael fucking Carter. Uh, some people call me Michael fucking Carter. It doesn't make for a great website name. <laughs> no. Some people call me Football Mike. Named oh, after your second, yeah, your uncle. Nobody calls you that. Come on, you're just making that up. Uh, uh I'll tell you about it. All about it later. Speaking oh of the hangers. Oh boy. No, it's it's a real thing. Hi. Um, I'm Jonathan. Or bueno, or both. Hi. What do you do? Who are you? Oh, I play Shorty. Shorty Rotundo. Shorty Rotundo is um. Dr. Jones' faithful companion ever since he saved him. In real life, if people want to see more of your work, where do they see that? Uh, they can uh, follow my... I'm trying uh, to be hot ones here, bro. Like, Tell the world who you are and where they can find what you. What the fuck? Yeah. <laughs> Eating the bomb. Yeah. Uh, it, you, can oh, find, <laughs> you can find me on uh, Instagram. Uh, uh, always underscore stay underscore focused. Always stay focused. Mm. Nice. Oh, hi. Oh, hi, Mom. <laughs> uh -huh. oh, yeah. I play uh, Dr. Jones. Um, New Yorker. What? What? Yes, yes. I'll get there. Okay. Yes. I do bird photography and uh, park tours. You can find both my Instagram and YouTube channel, uh, Bronx Naturalist. Check me out. I didn't know you did bird photography. That's dope. That's oh, super yeah. cool. I didn't know that either. What's the best bird you ever snapped? Uh, the best bird that I got decent photos that I want to get better ones is the magpie. Magpie? Magpie? Mm. Magpie? We saw it while we were in Barcelona. Mm. This particular bird is one of the few birds that can pass the mirror test. Very, very smart bird. Mm. At the wrong yeah, time yeah. on the day. Classic yes. literary bird. That's very cool. Brian Dowding. I'm Brian Cardillo. I work 
in business strategy for Wirecutter, uh, and I am based in Seattle, Washington. And you can find me on social channels of various channels under the name Satisfied Fool, one word. And I play Dr. Arabella Ford. Oh, Michael, I, I am Michael, and I play Gulliver Prendergast. What about you, Ariana? Who are you? I'm just who are you? Dungeon Master. Uh, I also work at Wirecutter as a senior updates writer. It's a living. It's 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 wonderful. I love it. Um, and nice. Uh, I do photography. You can find me on Instagram, Ariana underscore photography but good luck finding me because my name is not spelled normally um that's it thank you for watching you're Let not gonna know. elaborate and give give the right spelling no no, no. okay Suffice it to say i'll never find a license plate or a pen at a tourist shop with my name on it um but yeah uh thank you for watching i hope you enjoyed it don't forget to hit the bell and subscribe so you get notified when our next episode goes up if you're a dungeon master and you want to know a little behind the scenes on how I run things, I am also uh, filming and sharing some behind the scenes stuff on how I prep for these sessions. It's also on the channel under a playlist called For DMIs Only. You're welcome to check those out and come hang with me there. Um, that's it. Bye. 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 Wait, I gotta sign off. Wait, I gotta sign off. See you after work. Oh, yeah. Hey, I I'll like that. Sign off. That's a great sign off. See you after work, everybody. Bye. 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 See you after work. See you after work. Bye. 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 Bye.